Okay, we're back and we're in number two, part two of building beyond the basics. Beyond the basics to uh, building a business. I think I could, I can summarize that now. And Joe, what we were talking about is getting that core concept down from going from where new people coming in the door, they understand they're not just being trained to be a Rambo or a salesperson. They're being trained, and they've got to they got to prove themselves. The way they're going to prove themselves in this world, this environment, they've been uh, recruited uh, to enter is how well not only how well they can do this, not just that. That's just the basics, but how they can learn that and quickly develop and teach that to a team and earn the right for much bigger income rather than the little income that you come that smaller income which is great i mean you make a hundred thousand dollars or more per year but it's little it's small compared to what the unlimited income that you could make once you get into team building because once you get into team building you can go in and the world now becomes everything in the world becomes possible because now you can go if you could build teams if you can build three there well, you can build three more. You know, like if you run one McDonald's and you, you not only have assistant managers in there that do their job in that one McDonald's, let's say, or one real estate office or one financial services office, but they learn it and they can go and open their own and you use this office that you have not only to make money, but also as a launching pad for new locations now, once you do that, you can do your batches of three unlimited, you know, as soon as you train one, you train another. It's like Harvard University. It's the oldest college in the U.S., and I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they're going to be graduating kids uh, this year. You're going to have more Harvard graduates. Well, that's what you can do. Once you get a training center, you can keep having graduates and building uh, your front line of, of managers, and the great thing is it's, not, it's unlimited because you have taught them not just sales. So you can do this if it's just sales, but you've not taught them just sales. You've taught them how to expand themselves, you see? And again, this is not multi-level marketing pyramid for people who, who don't understand, but this is the way every organization uh, from the school system, with your school administrator, to the principals, to the teachers, to uh, the army with generals and colonels, and got, you know you have your chief of staff, and this guy runs a base out in Wiesbaden, Germany, and this guy's in San Antonio, Texas, and this guy's in uh, uh, Japan. I can't think of one in Japan, and this guy's down in Warner Robins, Georgia. Uh, he's the head guy there, but then underneath him, he's got his commanders, and you know. Uh, levels of guys underneath them because they've been taught not to just be the Rambo, they've been taught to guy, you know, they've been taught how to be a general, how to be a commander, how to build organizations under them. And so you can have, you can spiral your growth be simply because you mastered this little stage here and you took the time to teach people coming in. First, first of all, recruit them to the idea where they understood it's not this, not just that, but this one. That's, what, that's how you're going to establish yourself. So once they get out, they don't stop with selling. They keep duplicating themselves on out. So if, you, if they have the vision of just being the sales guy in their mind, they stay stuck there. You say the right things to them. You show them the right things, but mentally they're stuck because they have a filter in that kind of a hidden filter where they just don't process that information because this is the picture. They have the Rambo picture, not the general picture, building an army picture in their mind. So, Joe, is, tell me, is, is that clicking? Is that a, 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 is that a great uh, point to start with? No, absolutely. I think I remember for me when I had the Rambo picture versus the general picture and I think most people get stuck on that because they're so used to in corporate America, you know, doing it I, 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 I versus, you know, let's develop the team. And so right now as you're listening to this and you are a 
you know, a rock solid pro in the business, how is this uh, how is this information hitting the tumblers of your mind as a proven veteran? What kind of what kind of things is your mind kicking back to you as it's processing this kind of information, you know, in, in terms of your world and how this can free you up and get you moving in kind of a basic way in the direction you want to go? I think it's, it's very helpful. I think the philosophy, you got to keep reiterating the philosophy and the mindset and uh, clear the picture of what you're trying to create. So... I'm, I've been taking notes, definitely the Rambo versus the Schwarzkopf. Just the mindset of how do you train your people, like you said, when they first come in versus sales versus management. So, um, yeah, this is very, very powerful, but simple, you know? It's simple. It's very simple, easy to understand. But you know what? You could, The more you're in the business, the more you could easily lose that focus. Yeah, because the the thing is, all things that are successful in life have the tendency to get brought down because of, let's add another feature. Unless you, you get bored with doing this, you know, it's almost like, hey, we're in the dairy business, you know, we're milking the cow. I got an idea. Let's milk the ear, you know. Maybe we can get some juice out of the ear. Let's milk the tail. You know, everybody's got a theory. Let's milk the leg. No. Uh, yeah, we don't want to keep milking the tits because we've done that for years. That's boring. Let's try and do something. Let's be cutting edge. Well, there ain't no cutting edge. That's the way you do it. And when it comes into these things, you got to keep it simple because that's what works. And it's so easy for us to get drawn away because it's so... You know, in the beginning, we had to focus like crazy on this. Now you can do it second nature, and so other things kind of jump into your mind. But I heard something once that I've never forgot. In fact, I repeated it to Art Williams last, last week, and it was like the value, you know, a, a big side of being an executive. If you want to be a high-level executive, somebody in charge who can get things done, your value is not just on getting things you say yes to, but one of the big values is the ability to say no. It's kind of like if you're even president of the United States or something like that. You know, we had a guy come in after Nixon, Gerald Ford, and the country was out of control and this, that, and the other. He, spent, he did not approve one bill that Congress sent him. He said, we need to get simple in this country. And Gerald Ford he turned, he vetoed every bill. Send me a bill, he said, Congress, go ahead, but I'm going to veto it. And, uh, you know, I guess you can go overboard on it. But the deal is, if you, if you don't say no to things, again, you've got 24 hours in the day, you've got certain resources, that, but if you don't have the ability to say no to things, you're not going to uh, have time to say, uh, to get done the important things. So you've got to say, what's unimportant? You know, the good is the enemy of the best. And so if you don't keep your, sure, it'd be nice to do. Let's add that. Let's add that. Let's go with this. But if it deflects from your main goal, which is, you know, to get big, to be able to explode your business, you know, and not only explode there, explode there, you know, you just get covered up with duplicating yourself and then helping them do the same thing. If it gets in the way of that, confuses the issue, Sidetrack you like you can add too many products that you're selling. You can have too much training. You need to have enough training, but not too much training. You want to train, but you don't want to overtrain. If you have a soldier and you're going to war and he's going to be fired an M16, okay, let's just say you have your, your soldier and he's going to be using M16. Why do you want to teach him also how to use a, a sword? He ain't going to be using a sword. Well, it'd be fun. It'd be recreational. It'd give him healthy. A change of pace. He would learn some other tactics. Shut up. We're going to teach that sucker, get him to the driving range, I mean, drive, uh, shooting range, firing range, and get him shooting that M16. 
And if he spent any time he spends, it's going to be M16. We're not going to be wasting our time training, creating resources, buying swords, getting him sidetracked. We don't want him in the heat of battle thinking, well, should I use a sword or should I use the M16 or whatever it is, you know? And uh, uh, you want, you got to teach them how to use what they're going to be using. And so, Joe, uh, so much of this is not what you learn to do, but what you get yourself, you learn not to let yourself do. And that's what I would say the main, uh, one of the, the main things I'd like to bring out at this point uh, in this particular tape, rather than like, do this, do this, do this, do this, it's once you start to understand the context, so you're going to have time to be able to go back and do some of these these things, be able to teach people these things, you've got to be able to also give yourself the freedom to say, I'm going to say no, so that I have time to do this. Okay? Gotcha. So, Joe, I think not only is this something we need to be aware of, we need to teach people as they're coming up as rookies, because rookies, one of the marks of a child, and these guys are, they may be incredible, mature human beings, like successful, but in our business, they're child, they're children, you know, and one of the marks of a children is short attention span, Joe, short attention span. So we need to tell them, hey, kids, I'm not really interested in all of these other things. You don't need to be interested. You need to narrow your focus down here and prove you can do this because if you, this is not just doing this one time. This is learning a skill that is the key to the kingdom of unlimited growth and expansion of your business and your income that will give you not only unlimited income but unlimited security for the rest of your life. And so now's the time to cut the clutter out Give yourself a chance to not race ahead, but to master this thing. Get consumed by it and prove that you can do it because this is the key skill. It's not You don't have to master a thousand other skills. This is the key. This will be the core nuclear reactor skill for the rest of your life. And now's the time to learn it and not wonder about other things. We're going to get around. By doing this, you're going to get product knowledge. By doing this... Uh, you know, anything you don't know, people are going to ask you. And when they ask a question, you ask your upline and you get the answer. But don't sit and say, you know, I'm going to search and try and get the answer to everything about everything about everything before I leave my front door. No, you can't. You know, wars are not won like that. Lives are not changed like that. You've got to go with what you know. You've got to pay attention to what your manager is food feeding you, and you got to just shut that up. Like that's there's a reason they put blinders on horses so they don't get distracted. And it's not what you can't do uh, that might not limit you, uh, may keep you from being successful here. But it's the fact that if you can't keep from letting yourself get distracted by unimportant stuff, that can bring you down as much as anything else. And so, Joe, I think. It's worth spending a little time just making sure leaders understand this piece is as important as the new stuff you're going to teach it. Don't you agree? Yeah, I agree, 100%. And what do you, I mean, can you think of things now maybe in your office, in your training, that are super superficial to your main goal of what you really want their minds on and what you want to be teaching and having them talking about? And starting to get some ideas about how you can kind of streamline and maybe get some stuff out of your business uh, that, that maybe they do now that's maybe not serving your purpose? Yeah, absolutely. I, the more I'm thinking about it is, you know, i got to get rid of the stuff that isn't going to get us to the main goal and the main mindset as a whole team, you know? And just like you said before, too many products, too much, it blocks people from their main goal of building an unlimited income stream, and a growth expansion mindset, you know? Yeah. And the thing is, there's a time for every purpose under heaven. There's going to be a time for everybody to learn everything if they stick around. But if they don't stick around, if they don't get the basic skills down right, 
they're not going to stick around. And so, you know, it's just like in sales. We, we want to learn all the other products and everything, but if they have it in their mind that they're learning this stuff just for themselves, it's just making it harder and harder to ever get them thinking in terms of kind of cements them into the Rambo mode further and further. You know, now Rambo's got another skill. You know, now it's more, even more complicated for Rambo to duplicate himself. You know, how will I ever teach this kid to learn all the things I know? But if right from the beginning, they're thinking in terms I'm a trainer, well, they can, if they understand the timing. And uh, I'm going to teach the kids the basics. And then after they master that, then I can teach them this other stuff. But I, I've got time to do it. They, they're thinking like a teacher and a coach and a developer rather than as a salesperson. Because salespeople have a tendency to become prima donnas. I'm better than everybody else. I know how to do it better than everybody else. I'm very impatient. Who's these kids cluttering up my life? And they become the better and highly trained they are as individual salespeople. Usually the tougher it is for them to have the patience to ever be any good as a teacher and coach. Have you found that, Joe? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the, the more trained they are in that, they don't want to come back down and teach people, you know, the basics. They just want to show off and be number one, you know? That's right. You send them on a training exercise and they blah, 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 and uh, trot out all of their super knowledge and skill. And they put, they put on a Frank Sinatra performance and then the... The new rookie goes home and says, you know, after it's over, says, you were fantastic, number one. Number two, I'll never be able to do it. But a pro knows not to make it complicated and show off everything I know, but to make it as simple as possible uh, in explaining it. So the new person will say, hey, uh, that was great, but uh, I don't think I need you to go with me anymore. I think I can do it properly. And I'd probably do a little better. See, that's the smart trainer who makes that new recruit think they could do it probably better than the manager because then they won't want to be always having the manager uh, come along, you know. So that's, that's part two on this. And if you guys are uh, liking this stuff, we'll move on to part three.